did um did switching to boxing did it tra- change a lot of your interpretation because you were I mean you're still very strong but you were so strong in powerlifting and then to try to have those punches translate over and some of the women that you're fighting not looking athletic muscular not looking like a lot but they can unload on you has it changed some of your interpretation of like what lifting can do for people and what it's even done for you yeah i mean of course like there's no i used to think that if you know if you have a certain level of strength uh, of absolute strength then you should have a certain level of like sports specific strength and it really i, I don't think it's like that it's I don't fairly th- vague it's very vague mm. it is very vague i think um The way that I would see lifting nowadays, especially for athletes, is just using it as a tool to build resiliency in tissues. Like just, you know, just make your body bulletproof. Like if you can, you know, if you can hold 300 pounds of a bench or if you can push press like 200, 250, like you have a much more resilient, much more resilient tissues that can withstand the the hundred times that you throw a a jab in a workout, you know what I mean? So in that, in that sense, that's one of the things that I would use it for. The other is for just mental training. You know, if you go into the gym and you're able to lift 500 pounds, 400 pounds, like in your head, you're mm-hmm. like, I'm a, I'm a fucking beast, you know? Like I'm an animal. Like I can, I'm strong. What that says to you psychologically, just repeating like, I'm strong, I'm capable, I can do this. I, you know, I'm stronger than that guy. Like, look at how I look. I'm physically imposing. I think mm-hmm. from a psychological standpoint, does wonders and I dude I started boxing and I was getting in the ring with anybody anybody like I'd be like that girl what's her bench <laughs> legit I'd be like that girl she doesn't look like get the shit beat up and how did that feel though like like you go from being the strongest in the gym with and for anybody right to someone that doesn't look even remotely as powerful as you then kicks your ass what did what did that do for you? Did did, you, did that give you motivation, or did that at make the beginning? You- at the beginning, I was super confused. I'm like, wait, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't understand. Remember, I was at a, one of those fight fight club gyms, one of those chains, uh-huh. and there was this girl who was doing a quarter squat, terrible, with like 25 pounds on each side, yeah. like barely <laughs> able to barely able to move it. Uh-huh. And then she comes over and she's like, oh, whenever, let me know if you ever want to do some rounds. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I turn around and I tell my coach, <laughs> you see your squats. <laughs> And then she got in the ring with me and gave me the beating of a lifetime. And I'm like, I don't get it. Isn't I was so confused for a, for a while. I was very confused. I'm like, I don't understand how this is happening. You know, I deadlift 500 pounds. I can squat. I can, I'm very confused. How I'm not yeah. able to knock everyone out. Yeah. I thought I was just going to be able to knock everyone out. That's legit what I thought. Uh-huh. With, this is something with so I've much been, strength I had. This is something I've been fascinated by for a really long time. You know, I've, I've, I've kind of known this for a long time. I've, I've felt this for a long time. I've felt like there's a gap between an athlete that can just turn it on like that and somebody that can lift really well. A lot of times in professional football, you'll see some of the most jacked people and they're on the sidelines. Pat Project family, the legendary sweet rolls and the tasty pastries are some of the best tasting Protein snack you will ever <laughs> find. They're so good. Andrew, where can they get No it? lies detected. Head over to eatlegendary.com and at checkout, enter promo code POWERPROJECT to save 20% off your entire order and Seema's still eating them. So guys, hurry up, head over there right now before he eats them all. Those are the guys that are like third string. They never get an opportunity to play. They're in good condition. They're in good shape. They look great, but they don't always have an opportunity to play. And I'm not saying that lifting doesn't do anything for you. Um, I just think that maybe... Uh, what we've used in the past maybe just isn't nearly as effective as we thought. And Robert Oberst got really criticized um, very much so when he was on Joe Rogan. And he said, go into any NFL locker room, you're not going to see them deadlift. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't necessarily mean that no one deadlifts ever, but it's rare. You don't see the, a lot of professional athletes really focusing in and honing in on, hey, let's get a five or 600 pound deadlift. And I think Part of the reason is, is like, I don't really believe that there's a great transfer of those things. And even if there was, I think that the risk to benefit ratio uh, could be a little compromising and you can end up in some weird spots. Like if, like for you, you're responsible for so many other things other than just your lifts that if you go in and, and have a squat session and you squat 365 for some repetitions or something, which would be totally in your wheelhouse and totally in your capacity, 
Well, if it messes you up for boxing the next day and it kind of messes up your run and messes up the rest of your training, uh, then you're probably doing something that's kind of detrimental to the overall process and the overall thing that you're trying to do, which is trying to get good at boxing as quickly as possible. Of course. And that's what I said. You should always, first and foremost, when you're incorporating resistance training into your, your workouts, if you're an athlete, you should consider the the potential for uh, kind of interrupting your sport-specific training, the interference effect of that particular exercise or workout on this, the thing that actually matters, which is you on the field or you in the ring. But I think that looking at resistance training from the point of, oh, is this exercise going to transfer over? I don't think it's the right approach either because it's almost impossible to know if it's because of that exercise that you're getting better at the sport. Like there's no... Like a baseball player trying to attach it to the rack and <laughs> try to swing with the cable on there or something like that. Probably exactly. not a great use of your time. Exactly. I mean, figuring out how transferable an exercise is to a specific sport is, I think it's barking up the wrong tree. You know what I mean? Like it's not even the right que the right question to be asking. I think it's more like what, again, separating these exercises based on the adaptation that you're trying to get, whether it's strength, speed, mobility, or hypertrophy, and choosing the exercises based on that rather than, is this going to make me throw a punch faster? What's going to make you throw a punch faster is throwing a punch faster. Like there's nothing else that's as transferable as doing the thing. You know, that is the highest level of specificity is the thing, right? Mm -hmm. Outside of that is, all right, like how can I, if if the goal is, is throwing a punch, okay, how can I move my agonist muscle fast and quiet down the antagonist muscle as much as I can? Like that, that should be like the thought process. Like how can I make that movement smoother? Is it, am I restricted? You know, is my, is my shoulder blade maybe not mobile enough? Do I not have motor control of the serratus anterior that's not allowing my shoulder blade to move back and forth in a synchronous way or like in a, in a smooth way? The way the Diaz brothers kind of, they throw that shoulder forward quite a bit. I don't know if you've ever seen yeah. that tactic or even Mayweather, he fights like totally sideways and you can't hit him. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, it all really depends on, on, on what exactly the adaptation that you're trying to get is and what are the holes in the person's training? What are the, you know, but not necessarily, oh, like, will this exercise make you better at reflexes, hand-eye coordination? Will this exercise make you um, uh, better at your footwork or or your hip power? Like, there's no direct correlation for anything, and everything is multifactorial, and there's no point even trying to think about it that way. Hey, if you want to make Squirtle Squirt, I know you're enjoying this content, so like, comment, subscribe, and head to the Power Project Discord below. Peace.